Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Goldstein. I am chair of this Waterfront Parks and Cultural Committee. And I will be chairing the meeting from this uh, remote uh, tonight. Um, Andrew Zelter is not available today. So I'll be running it along with Oned, Oned James, who's in the room, and she will help me identify those who are seeking to speak. Okay, so I know some people are ready to go, including Tammy Meltzer, our chair, who's going to be along with Michael Kramer for the opening report. Michael is sitting at the table there. And they are going to report on some discussions that have been taking place regarding the formation of an East River Park Trust. So I'm I'm going to turn it over to them to discuss where we are and where we would like to go. Who would like Perfect. to Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have slides, so that we're going to start with slides. And I will say, for the record, I sit here remotely because I'm sitting in our role as CB1 at the Hudson River Park Trust Advisory Council. So, lots of food for thought um, as I sit here in the fabulous Pier 57 at the moment. All right. So the elevator pitch really is that. Um, the Hudson River has a Hudson River Park Trust, HRBT. Why doesn't the East River have an East River Park Trust? Uh, the, the word trust is a placeholder. And the, the Hudson River Park Trust was originally the Hudson River Park Conservancy. And when it was the Conservancy, I was the first chair of the Conservancy Advisory Board. And we've seen what we did on, on the West Side. So now that I live on the East Side, I was hoping to that this this kind of idea, you know, would, would begin to, um, to to get some traction. Oh, why why are we here? What's the problem? As we all know, Community Board One, along the East River goes up to the Brooklyn Bridge, and then Community Board Three goes from the Brooklyn Bridge up to 14th Street. <coughs> There's any number of plans and studies and whatever. This is just since 2001, but there's probably been many more plans and studies, but they all, you know, they all sort of stop here or they stop there or they, you know, they, they go from here to there. Um, there are some studies right now that I don't think anyone is aware of. Um, Community Board 6 has now studied the FDR Drive and they had a consultant who did a big report about how to improve living around the FDR Drive. And a lot of what they've done could apply to board three and board one as well. Now that I have to actually to speak to board three and said, here's, here's the dividing line going up to 14th Street. And what we're looking to do here is to get past what I would call segmentation, where the different neighborhoods are picked off by the city agencies one by one. And coastal resiliency is a good example of that. There's the two bridges, there's the seaport, there's the Friday seaport, there's you know, the East River Park in terms of coastal resiliency. And the concept here is for boards one and three to start working together, talking to each other. And I think we're getting that started. And to you know to do some planning that doesn't pit one neighborhood against the other, that they all work together and you know, you know put out play equipment. You want it to make sense for people who are on either side of, of the Brooklyn Bridge, as an example. So, unlike our neighbors along the Hudson River Park, when we're talking about improving accessibility, advanced notice for events, active recreation, esplanade maintenance, landings for ferries, berthings for historic ships, that's the kind of stuff that needs to be organized, and, you know, to have some people who are taking the, the big picture instead of just the small picture. Next, I get to the next slide. Next slide, thank you. So uh, this is an example at board three. 
of uh, you know the competing uses that we find in our waterfronts. So this is a garbage barge, and this was in this was the dog parade, which was up in Ward Three, and it was a lot of fun. But now it's uh, not there anymore because the East River Park has been shut down. Um, there's billions of dollars that are earmarked for waterfront resilience, uh, and there's um, all sorts of money that's gone into rebuilding the East River Park. And there have been talk about the bikeway walkway Esplanade south of uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. We have you know, conversations about uh, Brooklyn Beach, Brooklyn Bridge Beach, I guess you would call it. Obviously, Gotham Park is another you know park that's nearby, and to, you know try to to integrate all of these these assets so that it makes a little bit more sense instead of doing it in, in such a haphazard manner. So we're at a pivotal moment where the stewardship of East River is sort of up for grabs right now. Um, right now, EDC theoretically is controlling the waterfront, but they've delegated to the Parks uh, Department uh, the Esplanade, uh, the Bikeway Walkway Esplanade, I guess, is that uh, you have a responsibility for maintenance of that. Uh, and, you know, the, the idea here would be to create an entity, let's use that word, a structure where um, the community voices could be heard. At the Hudson River Park, for example, there's an advisory board, there are 50 members of that advisory board. They represent all segments of the community. And elected officials, you know, may come and go, but, you know, we need steady sources of funding, both for maintenance and capital needs. Um, so together with Ward 3, we're talking about trying to seize the opportunity to shape the waterfront, uh, strength and diversity, the spirit of the communities, um, and then trying to work through the question of how to do it. And this could be one entity, this could be two entities, one entity that just uh, can receive uh, money from government or can receive money from private foundations or grants, uh, and another that is actually out there maintaining and operating um, the park. So they can be a friends of, and they can be a 501c3, or they can be something more formal like a, uh, a uh, LDC, a local development corporation. But that's not, don't be afraid of that name. That's just the way that the city feels comfortable with giving the community money. So one voice at the table, trying to look at the big picture from 14th Street all the way down, trying to navigate amongst the alphabet soup of, of properties, DOT, DDT, NYCHA, FDR, DOT, Coast Guard, you know, there are all sorts of ent entities that are involved with our waterfronts. And this is the time where the plans that we make are going to be plans that we have to live with for the next 50 years or something like that. Um, and what happens is that they, each agency has its own agendas and they're sort of siloed from each other. So the idea is to you know try to, to get rid of the inefficiencies and the overlapping responsibilities and the missed opportunities. So it's been 50 years since this photo was taken. Look carefully. There's no no South Bridge here. This is the old uh, seaport here. It certainly wasn't inviting in terms of a waterfront. Um, but you know what we've what we've done here is we've sort of talked about you know what park advocates really need, and one is of course the budget cuts that the Parks Department gets. Uh, you know, because of COVID, the in 2020, the department's budget was slashed by $84 million, about 14% of the department's budget. In 21, the, um, the funding remained the same. In 22, there was a, uh, a campaign for 1% of the budget for parks, and it's fallen short of the 1% goal. There have been some modest increase in funding, but, you know, frankly, as the commissioner will tell you, you know, so a lot of parks and there are a lot of responsibilities elsewhere and, and to have some dedicated streams, especially from some of the funding sources that are going into the, the waterfront in our area with all the ferry services and, and uh, there's some, I'm told that there's a, a big developer who pays rent at year 17 and things like that. So, you know, there are ways of, of finding streams of money to 
to maintain and operate a park. Um, and again, we've been looking at other examples of um, governance structures, and maybe Ariel will talk about that a little bit more, which can leverage um, funding, prioritize community needs. And uh, what we're looking for here is perhaps a resolution to create, maintain, and operate a premier waterfront park along the east side of downtown Manhattan, serving as a recreational and cultural resource for New Yorkers and visitors alike. Uh, it's not just for the neighborhoods, you know, people from all over the world come to the Brooklyn Bridge and, you know, they should be able to enjoy our Esplanade just like they come to the High Line and they enjoy the Hudson River Park uh, Esplanade Park. So, Tammy, uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about structure? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. So we, um, a group of us from CB1 and CB3, um, we've had this dialogue in CB3 as well, where we started looking around at different structures because we'll, with the recognition and hope that we want something that's more public facing, focused on public space and parks and things like that, we started looking at opportunities. So what's out there? There's the Bronx River Alliance. There's the Hudson River Park Trust. There are, we knew we didn't, nobody I think wants something that is like an authority, like they have on Battery Park City or Roosevelt Island. We're really looking for something with more community-based priorities, public space focused, and public access and activities. So, we looked at a variety and we've come down to a couple. It could be a conservancy, it could be a trust, it could be mocking something like they have over in Red Hook. There's lots of opportunity. And that's one of the things that we're looking at and hoping that perhaps the urban fellow program that we have coming up, we're gonna submit a proposal for them to study all kinds of things, taking a look at the unique makeup of our neighborhoods and i would say neighborhoods because it really is a large connection otherwise i mean we talk about it all the time in the resiliency programs so they're going to add 250 feet of space on the bottom half of our neighborhood and yet the priority seems to be focused on commercial and ferries and privatization of expansion not public space public access so really it's about finding something that serves the needs that we've all talked about as a community and by the way i have eight minutes so i'm going to go on mute in between questions being asked oh and michael i'm not we did have in the resolutions that we did on resiliency a call for uh an eight a call for a different perspective than for example edc to manage the entire area this would be building on that because we have already started with that as a resolution and one of our asks now this is taking it one step further okay um can we get some questions please um, so obviously this is an agency, so tell me if this is just still up for grabs, but um, is this sort of conceived as a advocacy group to advocate for certain uses um, in the projects that are already going on, or is it meant to be something broader um, that would actually like, manage the area of something more like a sort of like... Optimally, it would be to manage. Would, would that require some sort of state action, like the Hudson River Park Trust. Right. Well, Hudson River Park is, is both city and state-owned. Right. The East River waterfront that we're talking about is, is solely city-owned, so the state is out of it. But yes, you need you need to get government buy-in to do this. So we've had some preliminary conversations with the different electeds. Um, the understanding is that the idea has gone up to City Hall. We haven't really got a formal response about it, but we need to start at the community board level and work our way up. David? Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, wondering what may have missed it with the EDC role in all of this would be. What so, it might be. So EDC has, in an offhanded way, encouraged us to move forward with this. You know, they're, they're not really interested in managing parkland. 
uh, and they certainly have a different agenda, as one might say. They have the word development in their in their title, and you know it's it's pretty um, apparent that there will not be any housing along the East River waterfront from uh, 14th Street down to the Tim Battery. I think that's uh, generally accepted. Makes sense. It's the last time. We're not going to have a seaport city. I think that's also pursuant, David, one of the comments I might add is it seems to be one of the problems we have about really getting the Brooklyn Bridge Beach. We can't get anything like a Gansenport down in our neighborhood because we need a driving overarching agency to work with and motivate for funding and uses and things. We really need that voice at the table because unless there's EDC has a commercial partner who wants to do something that the community wants, EDC really isn't the vehicle for public space. Other questions? Richard? I'm not sure I have a question. I have, I have to say I'm, I'm pretty confused as to really where you're going with this. Uh, you sounded like you started off by saying this is a community board initiative between one and three, but actually we're not really part of it. It's a separate entity. You would basically take this outside of the community board purview, some other organization, and then are, is it fundraising group? Is it an oversight uh, management? And it's an enormous stretch of park for one entity, I'm just really confused as to where you're right. where you're going with this. The answer is yes. Um, yes, and I'll that's why I'm I'll confused. Start, I'll, start, I'll start by talking about the history of the Hunter River Park, which was when Board 1 and Board 2 and Board 4 started talking to each other. And this is what we ended up with. So the... the um, and formed by legislation at the state. Well, after a while, it was, in, it was informed by the state legislation. Yes. Seven, you know. um, the, the, the key here is to make sure that everybody is comfortable with the idea that we could have an overarching um, entity that would do master planning and that would be responsible for the day to day. Now, obviously, community boards don't do that. And obviously, community boards don't get funded to do something like that as well. So then we would be working cooperatively with different agencies to make everything happen, including the parks department and feeling the commission would say he's always welcome to receiving more money uh, to, uh, to operate and maintain parks. And so there is a public private part of this as well that could be, could be um, uh, created. Um, Chairman, do you want to take it a little bit? I would just comment on that. Just to start with some other organization doing overarching planning for the park sounds to me like it's taking it out of the public purview, which I think is, I look at as the community board into some private organization yeah, that has its own. And I see that in, uh, in other organizations that, that are organization pretty private. Would, would be consisting of the stakeholders. You're not taking anything out. Well, the stakeholders are not the theater. Board of the park as an example. Where you have those 50 stakeholders representing a myriad of different age of, uh, uh, neighborhoods and, and uh, groups. Yeah, but that's not the same as Hudson River Park Friends. It's very well, different. Friends, friends raises money. Right. So you're saying you're gonna this is gonna raise money I'm and sorry. and manage the park and do overarching. I'm suggesting that one that we haven't figured it out yet. And two, okay. that it's probably two different two different uh, arms to, to consider. One being a friends hub, and then the other being a conservancy, alliance, or trust, or something that could that would attract government money, and that could work as an, an internally with the other government agencies. Okay, Richard. Any let's let's move the discussion along. Other speakers. Anyone else want to comment on this? Oh, just in relation to the beach access, I thought that um, Margaret Chen and um, Gail Brewer had both given money to actually build that get down and that the EBC at the last meeting um, where they presented 
actually was EDC or was it MLC EJ? Somebody presented that that get down was part of the current work so that there would actually be access to the sand piece, correct? I mean, one, one hopes so. I mean, Scott Stringer came up with 500,000 dollars 10 years ago for work. I thought Gail had given like six million, and I thought Margaret Chin had also given six million. Um, I mean, granted, yeah, yeah, a while ago. Again, but... you know, I'm not interested with that, but yeah, yeah. The, the idea is to to leverage all the resources that are available, and to talk about you know how to keep some of the revenue that's being generated by the waterfront within the waterfront community. Just um, yeah, so still so a little. Um, you're mentioning two very different things. Hang on, Jess, before you keep going, hold on a second. Remember, what we're talking about before everybody is a pathway to get somewhere. Know what, we know what the end looks like. We know what the beginning looks like. We're not sure what the middle looks like. That's one of the things the Urban Fellow will study. There's no defined parameters here other than what we currently know. The Parks Department doesn't have the budget someone needs to be here who that someone is cannot be exactly who we are today we don't have the structure in place and with that i'm going to hop off because i'm at the Hudson park advisory council meeting which starts in a minute so i pass it back to michael to answer more questions and thank you i apologize what do you have any item Yes, I was just curious um, how you think that this new entity would help with resiliency planning because we know that the um, the five day seaport, for example, has a plan, but it doesn't have the money to build it. Um, is that part of the reason you want this new entity to uh, make sure that you can lobby for monies? Absolutely, and, and you know, and and in furtherance of that, they have no money to maintain it after they build it. How does the um, it all sounds very wonderful, you know, and making a, a new park on the west on the east side. Um, I yeah, I'm a little confused, and I think it's fair to say this is foundational. You're not anywhere near where you know we could really vote on something or at least i could um i think one of the things just to keep in mind is when you're comparing the hudson river park to what's going on here on the east side i'd say it's a bit of apples and oranges to say the least in terms of its history and also in terms of the number of people and agencies currently involved in big planning exercises as we speak many of the ones you mentioned Whereas, of course, on Hudson River Park or Governor's Island, there was big nothing, or Brooklyn, the Navy Yard. So, you know, it's very different. And I don't, I, could, I couldn't assess exactly how that would, you know, manifest itself in sort of a new governance structure, but it is very different. And I think that has to be taken into consideration when you make these comparisons. And I think they're important to make. And I think it's really important to drill down on how these things, in fact, are governed and what is positive and negative and what you're going to take from each one of these. And we do have a lot of precedent which you're pointing out so just food for thought anyway i thank you for this effort it's tremendous yeah, I mean, I, I considering it's you know, well beyond an intern by the way i might ask so yeah. <laughs> um you know there's a lot of money coming into the to the east of the waterfront and you know if you if you stretch a little bit you can also see where the fdr is, is going to be redesigned and if you stretch a little bit you can see where NYCHA is going to be um, evolving so, you know, all of that influences what happens on the waterfront and they all become, you know, interconnected in some, some way, shape or form. And the idea is to have, have somebody, one voice speaking for that waterfront that's, that's in, you know, in those meetings at that table who can, you know, work with the various agencies to create a master plan. Uh, um, can I just comment on this? Uh, I see this as a positive step, you know, to get the community more involved in the planning of a, of the park on the east side, rather than leaving it to EDC, for example. I mean, yes, Richard, it needs work. And I think that's the reason that this organization is putting forward also 
an urban fellow to, you know, meet with members of the community to see who should be participating in this and what its goals should be. It's, it's not a finished product. But that doesn't mean we should stop and not pursue it. I think we should. I think, you know, the two community boards is a good place to start and they have expressed some interest in pursuing this. And I, I think our chair supports it. And uh, I, I don't see the downside. Certainly not if we're just going to continue discussions on how to create this entity and it would be representative of our community. My question is yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like it sounds great in theory. I would be supportive of it, the concept of it. Um, but we're talking about two different things between advocacy and actually master planning came and go, right? It's, it's not advocacy about influencing plans and the law in charge. That's one thing. If it's about taking it over, that's a huge undertaking. I mean, a lot of it's already underway. So I'm just confused about where we fall on that. Yeah, because ulti ultimately, the governance is in about a goal. Okay, ultimately. In order to get to that point, we have to interact with any number of agencies, city hall, and whatever, to create an entity that gets a seat at the table that can then represent the park at those meetings. And so then from that evolves a master plan. So we're, you know, right now we're getting picked off neighborhood to neighborhood. What do you do or how do you, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I, it sounds, I'm intrigued by it. And something needs to be there. Uh, currently, for whatever the reasons, um, this area is not maintained properly. Not enough attention for whatever reason, budget cuts or or um, you know, inadequate staff. So I, I would support having some some organization be the steward of it. Not necessarily it doesn't have to be governing it, but some friends. <coughs> Consulted or or give input with all the agencies as more of a unified voice, but governance and maintaining it. That's a I don't know if that necessarily has to be the goal. Maybe it can evolve to that if necessary. But but there does need to be some 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 advocacy organization that covers this length to effectively uh, advocate on behalf of the entire threat and not just one part at a time. I, yeah, I'm, I was still confused and I, I don't expect it to get answered tonight, but I mean, for example, like, how do you integrate something like Gotham Park into this concept? Here they have, you know, you're part of this area. Yes. I mean, I guess I could ask you, like, how do you see this working in your favor? <laughs> Well, uh, if maybe that's not a good, I mean, I don't know, that's maybe that's, that, right? yeah, I'm just, no, I'm just curious what people who were very invested in planning of this area think of this idea, I guess, since I was frozen. I, but, well, I, interestingly, so going back to the point that if this is like confluence of a lot of different resiliency projects, right? Like, so with Gotham Park, you've got already time of that, the temporary seaport protections, and then you've got 5i seaport resiliency, which is the longer term planning that's going to connect right into there. You've got BNCR, which is currently under construction, which is going to tie into there. And I remember when I came actually to this community board um, a few years ago, and I said, Hey, we'd like to build a park underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. What do you think? And the community board was like, Yay, great idea, awesome. Here's a resolution in support. And then, um, you know, me, I was just sort of, okay, so I thought, what do I do with this? You know? um, and I had no idea what I was doing. And then what I realized in conversation with all of the other people who had much more experience on the community board um, about how to do it, they basically said the community board um, can give you this resolution, but we can't build you a part. That's not what we do. And so, 
you know, after multiple discussions, it basically came up. You have to have your own advocacy organization if you want it to move forward, right? So going back to Richard, when you with what you were saying, yes, I think community board has a goal and has a continued goal in terms of being a stakeholder in all of the conversations. But there are limitations, at least in my experience that I found in going through this process of how much they are able to advocate because frankly, the community board deals with a gazillion things all year long. And if you want to get anything done, you have to have laser focus to get it done, which is I'm guessing why you are considering. Are you guys considering setting up your own 501c3? Perhaps. Okay. And, and then I guess for, for going back to your question, I don't know how we'd integrate. I think that's a conversation that we would need to have, but it's not just us. And obviously, the MCR is already almost complete. Um, right. All of these different entities theoretically, yeah. you know, in design mode, Seaport resiliency is already, you know, starting up too. So it's, it's complicated. Yeah. I mean, that was my earlier point is that here you have all these entities busy with master planning of a yeah. tall order and a lot of money. Whereas in the Hudson River, you had derelict piers, which no one knew what to do with. And, you know, really different situations. So I'm trying to figure out well, how does this happen? That's what I was asking Rose this year. Yeah. But anyway, that's it's a big question. I mean, the only the only other part to add would be well, Tammy and I and others in this room have had ongoing conversations with EDC about things like this. So EDC is encouraging us to move this forward. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, David? So, as I understand, I, that, I, I didn't hear I, that last bit again. As I understand this, and stop me if I'm wrong, this is essentially an organizing. I want to create a coherent voice that will be heard and then will participate in the creation of the East River Park development. And as such, we don't exactly know what form it will take, how it will end, but we do know, and I think we all agree, we can't just stay here. We've got to move on, and this project is, is to discover how we move on, perhaps create that view. Do I have this right? And we're looking for something similar for Board 3 as well, and that gives us you know, enough of a start to have you know, all the conversations that are needed. And some of it is with the electives, but some of it is with the agencies and city hall as well. And with the constituents. Of course. Yeah, of course. This is my last comment here. I, I don't, you mentioned a resolution. I can't imagine what we would be resolving at this point. I don't know what I could possibly sign on to. I think it's just premature. If you're starting conversations, why don't you continue those conversations? And as you get further down the road and it's a little clearer as to what it is we might be signing on to and then come back and talk but i don't want to sign away anything that reduces the involvement the oversight involvement the participation of this community board uh, versus some separate group of people that are loosely or not at all connected to us but first you you, you state the problem problem is that there are so many different plans out there, so many different neighborhoods that are being addressed individually without any any kind of master plan. That's the, that's the preamble to this resolution. And the rest of the resolution is that there should be efforts made to, to integrate the, the needs of the communities along the East River, along the East River, from the 14th Street all the way down to the battery. That's, okay. that's the guts of what we're doing right now, and then we're exploring options. Mark, you have Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying on, on this uh, very preliminary. And when I see the word trust there, it, it, you know. You can't believe it's a placeholder. Yeah, you I understand. Remember but I, yeah, it was a Hudson River Park Conservancy a right. long time ago. But it could morph into that, and it could be an alliance. Yeah. It could be lots of things. But that we're but, not worried about. The but trust. Yeah, yeah, you know, just when you have these entities, I mean, how many times are we, you know, we get uh, projects and they're basically more times than not fade to complete before we can even have input. 
with these trusts, agencies, and whatever entity you want to call it. So, so have yet another one. Um, I've, uh, you know, I know a little bit about it, but but um, I'm there? a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, What's there? Need to need more. What's, what is there there, Mark? Well, that's not that's not the point. <laughs> that is the point. The point is the point is why would this make all it these decisions are being made no. in a silent manner. That's the point. The point is to to try to bring everything out into a comprehensive plan. Well, sometimes that's not good either. So, I mean, uh, not necessarily not necessarily a good thing to do that as well. So, when things are comprehensive and top down to the bottom. Yeah, no, I was. I, it's very fascinating question, and with all, all, all that you bring up here, um, I guess one thing that comes to mind in describing what you've described is where you know this is generally the Department of City Planning that's given yeah. the role in our city to do exactly what you're saying, which is to be the overarching organization that looks at the planning of New York. Alas, I recognize that isn't necessarily what gets done, and we don't have a comprehensive city plan. Which is you are well aware we have asked for for years. Um, so I'm not sure how that they fit, you know, like you're doing the planners fit into this, you know, the overarching idea. You know, one is governance and one's planning. It sounds like they are two different things going on. Right. Put yourself in the, in the role of the Brooklyn Bridge Park. Put yourself in the role Easy of, to do. of Governor's Island. You know, all of these, all of these undiscovered mar marbles that are now evolving. In time, and it's because they are speaking with one voice. But they were discrete, undeveloped places. That's my point. They have nothing in common with a swatch of the city that is highly developed, has a huge history, and in fact has and many plans ahead. What's developed in the North Bridge? You're talking about. It's you're basically talking about, you know, it's a a highway. Well, I mean, you have housing. You have. No, no, I mean, I'm not sure I understand what you're trying, saying. Trying to. We're trying to limit the conversation basically to the FDR and, and, and the east of the FDR, but, which is well, what But what's the East River? How does the East River Park fit into this? Uh, that's it is a huge between, development. Between the river and, and the FDR Drive. Right. Yeah. So that doesn't. The, the, the yeah. area that we're talking about is the east of the FDR Drive. It's east of the FDR Drive. Okay. okay. Wendy has a question. Wendy? Interesting. Yeah, I just, I, I think. Um, if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, you and Tammy are coming to us to ask for a resolution to ask to explore this more. And I would support it. I think like Paul, um, I hear this as a positive, even though to Alice's point and others in the room, there's a lot of details that still need to be flat, you know, fleshed out over time. But I also think that, you know, when you think about what can get accomplished, um, with the Hudson River Park or even the battery uh, and the battery conservancy or, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge Park, there's something wonderful about putting a, out a calendar, which, you know, is a long term way down the line when everything's developed. That is a uniform, you know, uniform uh, that we feel like it's all part of our park. And I think that what you're asking for us is to look at the park as something that it could be, you know, one park up to 14th Street. and. You know, that's not a bad idea because it, the east side is neglected. It does need maintenance. It does need more thought. And quite frankly, it, it needs, it needs a, a, it needs an advocate. So, um, you know, there's lots of details that still need to be put together, you know, but I'm, I, I just want to say that I'm in support of what you and, Al, and uh, Tammy have put forth. Okay. Any other questions? To follow up on that, um, perhaps we should support or at least discuss uh, a proposal to create an East River Trust with the goal of creating a community-driven entity to help manage and participate, participate in the growth of the East River Park. I mean, something along those lines, just to <laughs> hire a, you know, this, this person that we talked about, an urban fellow 
to rather than the word help advance to study the creation of blah 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 and, and to meet with the um all the stakeholders yes i'm sure so who does that who's responsible for all that land besides the city but which agency one the cdc and then parks and so you're you're both parts okay so then okay i can stop it <laughs> um, maybe you could opine on what they're talking about yes um, <laughs> Please opine. Could you, could you, yeah, share your thoughts on what you've heard? Uh, it's pretty early, uh, but I, what I was hearing was uh, a study group. I mean, you're, you're really talking about a study group. And, uh, but nobody has given us that land yet. The parks department hasn't, hasn't got that land yet. Uh, and the reason, and some of that land is, could be coming, right? It's not, it's not actually there yet. And sounds like an interesting concept. Then you should tailor this so that you're asking, like what Paul is saying, for a working group. I think you get yourself in trouble immediately. Where's the trust or right. alienate the yeah. group? Forget that. Real a working group, which is essentially what you're saying, that is comprised of whoever you want it to be, to look at the possibility of attempting to, you know, make a cohesive review of the East Side or however you, you know, whatever the sort of more. Thank yeah, I, I agree with the same thing. Um, I don't want to make it too specific, especially with the creation of using the word trust. And I'm hesitant on the word managing. I don't, it may come to that, but I think right now we need an advocacy group to study it. But but I'm hesitant on creating saying like a, an organization to manage. I assume, Paul, are you taking notes? Yes, but I think, you know, we should. The first step would be to have an urban fellow meet with stakeholders and see what the community wants. We're talking among 10 people here in this room. It shouldn't be solely our decision how to advance the East River waterfront. But this so where would this, sorry, where would that money come from for this urban fellow? It's a, it's a city funding project. We have. The community board has access to this it's every year. Quarters. Community board is inside of the urban development. You get one for the year that we have them? I think so. Uh -huh. I think so. so this would We've be had them before. Yeah. And this would be our urban fellow. Has there been have there been any other proposals about how to use this no, person for this option? Wasn't Michael Levine under that? Yes, he wasn't a fellow. He identified fellows for us. So we definitely oh, had something in the budget that allowed it. And I, I think you raised a good point. Like, does the board get to choose the project they want the fellow to work on? I, I don't know. Anything. Yeah, how, how does that work? So we have we have an asset here. How do we decide how to use that asset? And is that asset shared with CB3 if this is going Same to go good question. across? I mean, I wonder if it's if they also get an urban fellow, then can we <laughs> double the time of urban fellow? Do we have to we can bring that to, to CB3? We haven't had that conversation. Um, but if they're studying governance structures, yeah. then presumably whatever they study is applicable for three and so Right. David? So I'm thinking of this is, and I do like the term working group, the objective would be something more than the book with the guidelines and principles. The objective would be to go to various constituents, the various stakeholders, and come up with their notion what they would like to see in terms of either planning or participation or governance, whatever people feel would be appropriate, but they would all have a stake in determining what it would be. That's the purpose of the working group to come up with what kind of form people want to see here. I think that if that were to happen, what we really want is a partnership on this with CB3 that's actually official because 
it's not like we're going to say to our urban fellow, okay, you can only look at people south of the Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, really, this urban fellow should be actually talking to the communities all along the perimeter that you're proposing. I think that's totally essential. Sounds like a great idea. Can it be done? But, but again, I, I, well, we're initiating. Well, we can do what we can to get the board three to come on. To it. Are you talking to Trevor yeah. and Aitza? Can you guys like oh. raise your voice a little bit? Sure. Just the the volume keeps going down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Just uh, pitch your voices, please. Thank you. Okay. Are you talking to Trevor and Aitza? <laughs> yeah. and Andre and I'll go over. Okay. <laughs> So, I don't want to burden the joint resolution, which we want to propose something possible here. We need to start and we can give them, ask them to join us. And I want to, I want to add for David's sake, you know, we're also talking about what happens in the water in each you know, that would be part of this too. We're very concerned about that. I comment on that. I mean, if we don't have buy-in from CD3, this doesn't go anywhere. So I, mean, I think that's a first step to make sure we have buy-in. We've been working with CD3. But we don't have it CD3 yet. CD3 is having a meeting in October. Okay, so let's see what they say in October. And again, just to make my point one last time here about this asset, I'd like to know from our chair or our board, what options there are in the use of that asset. This may be one, this is one option. Are there others that are being considered? So when we have a, we can make a rational choice as to how to use it. No, I, I know, but unfortunately, Tammy's not on anymore, but I'd like to hear from you. I hear am, from you. and I can tell you that from experience, there have been, I don't remember exactly what we did in order to identify the project, but people were generally asked People, I don't know how that got put out there, but people were asked. It wasn't just one person saying, "Here's the project." I know that um, in this particular case, we both, I, I got a note from Tammy asking me some thoughts, and this is going back quite a while. If we got an urban fellow, what might they study? Um, so, yes, is the answer to your question. That is something that people do can engage on. You know what the law of the board is in terms of bylaws on this. I don't know. But certainly, obviously, if we are involved in selecting an intern as a board and just chair, then that's the board's choice. So I would think that you would go to a board meeting and you would identify what, you know, that you have this option to have an urban fellow for X number of days at X number of hours. And what would you like to see this person do? You come up with some okay. great ideas and you say yes or no. I think that's how it is, but I don't want to speak for Tammy. That's my experience in my lowly vice chair role. <laughs> so. I think Tammy has prepared an application. Should we make it available to see? Most um, I would say that just um, my concern with parks department <clears throat> having oversight of this area after it is complete, I guess once it's built, then it's turned officially over to parks for management, um, is that we have seen in several instances where parks department's budget gets cut and like it has been, you know, the past year. And I know that I'm with a group that is, you know, has been advocating unsuccessfully for 1% of the city's budget to be funded to parks recognizing that the management, like the actual space, the physical space under parks management is extremely large given the number of staff and the number of the budget that parks department has. So while I think that, like I'm just thinking this through right now, but as a working group, I think that's wonderful. But if you don't also come in with the funding to be able to support the space once it's complete, then I don't know how much influence you are able to have on the outcome if you're basically saying a chronically underfunded agency, an understaffed agency that doesn't have consistency that staffing necessarily year to year is able to take on whatever this working group is able to come up with. So how do you make sure but you've identified the need. 
Yes. And that would be one of the goals is to supplement the parks department's budget in this particular area. So it wouldn't be solely a sort of a working group, like a study group. It would actually be a fundraising group. It could be. <laughs> I feel like, frankly, that's essential. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Central Park, as we tell you, the world is basically funded by the Central Park Conservancy. Right? Is, parks uses their money in other places. That's why you have level of care at Central Park in Central Park. Well, and I just want to understand that not because our parks department is looking there for our public spaces. It's because they are congregated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Committee, we've been discussing this item and we have several others uh, to review tonight. We've been going over this for roughly an hour, a little under an hour. So the real question is, do we want to take any kind of action. We want to make a statement uh, about this, uh, I would say, you know, considering an urban fellow to bring together a working group and consider the creation of an alternative governing organization for East River Park, reflective of our community. The only thing Paul was saying that it's East River Park is East River Park exists as a park in New York City currently. So are we looking to change that or I'm not sure I understand why it's being called East River Park. Isn't the East River Park an actual place that exists today? Well, I'm here in the right area. East it River Park. Have, it doesn't have any trees, but yes, you're correct. And okay, so I it's just, that's not what you're asking though. You're asking for a well, new East River I'm Park. Looking to create a Continuous park along the east. River. Okay, that's different. So, just if you're writing something, make that clear. All right, Michael, keep that language in mind. Okay. Shall I thank everybody? Questions, comments? We're not voting on anything, correct? Just to be uh, clear. Are you what if we, we're not voting? Wait, or do we have something? What is it that we're? What's the next step, Paul? Well, yeah. To hire this urban fellow, is that what he's called? Yes. Urban fellow to study this and to gather together stakeholders to see what the consensus of our community is as far as the future of the East River waterfront. And we'll do this what in the form of an email from the chair to this to the presenters. What? Wait, so then uh, how how are we going to relay this message? This this uh, uh, what you're saying? How is it going to be relayed? Or formed? Well, we, we, we would do a resolution supporting the hiring of an urban fellow. And one of his goals would be to study this issue. How does that address Richard's concern that there might be other projects that people on the board would want to would want to um, support? Why? I thought this was about supporting the idea of an entity, a working group that would look at different ways to yeah, govern and finance. It was, this it was new very much, we were very much looking for guidance from Board One. And we could bring back to board three to say board one is interested in working with board three and thinks that there should be a an East River Park along south of 14th Street, continuous park south of 14th Street. So that's what we're going That's do. different. That's, that's completely different. different. And part of the problem here is that we have, for some reason, we have two items on the agenda about this. I wanted to ask him for a support of the trunk and one of the trunk here in the So, oh. what are you really asking for exactly? I'm, I'm, more, I'm most interested. So in having something I could bring to board three, saying board one is interested in working with you on the subject. Yes, I think one. So let's go resolution supportive of the concept that you described. Calling it a working group and not a trust and not a trust. I, I think that sounds fine. Not I didn't get involved with the place. Okay. 
Richard, are you okay with the group? It's a, a working group. It's a little, still a little unclear. I'm sorry to be dense on this, but a working group to work, go to community board three to discuss how we might work close, more closely together to organize our interests for the for the East River. I, I'm not. That sounds good. As I'm confused I am. I can't stay it. Very soon. You Sorry, I'm not. I'm too. The community board one that. is concerned about the manner in which a waterfront, continuous waterfront park, will be developed. We would like to reach out to community board three to work in concert. Okay, to try to develop the idea of a continuous East River waterfront park. From 14th Street down to if you change the word to explore the idea instead of try to create, I could support that because I don't know what I don't know if that's really the right answer, but I would say explore it. But I would also just suggest you say working group, including board three. My goodness, you're gonna to want to include a million people in this working group. So I wouldn't specify I would say including board three if you be specific to board three. Okay, well you could put including X, Y, and board that's three. That's the audience we're trying to reach right now. Okay, let's get, many let's stakeholders get board including board three working together, okay, well, and then you can go to the second and third okay. stage. Does okay. it make sense to wait to, till board three opines? Before we do, I actually feel like it would this whole argument would be much stronger if you came with, let's say, Trevor, or like if you had a partner at CB3 saying, Look, this is something that we are interested in doing together. And that's so already we, we've had that meetings on the level of we did just yeah. yeah, in, in Trevor's waterfront. Yes. Oh. But there, and so we waited for board three yeah. to explore this concept first before we brought it to board one. We deferred to board three. And board three, well, they do a was board three's board three has not issued a resolution at this time, but they're scheduling something in October. So perhaps we should wait until that. But I mean, not I mean the, 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 I'm, a, I'm a sort of a veteran of community boards. We're just looking for a resolution of support for a concept to explore. Yeah. We're not, we're not, I have no problem with, you know, supporting, supporting the idea of exploring this with other entities to see what, Thank you. whether they identify similar problems and they see that's what, what kind of explore. Right. Right. So I don't, I don't have a problem. So that's the no, everybody but four three. No. Uh, All right. So that's it. It's just that uh, is a fine. Thing not to explore. Hiring anybody to. Well, I, somebody has to come up with the language here, so we know what we're yeah. voting on. Otherwise, we can't go forward. Yeah. Paul, what's the text? Okay, to explore the, um, with stakeholders throughout the community. For the future of an East River waterfront park, how about something that basic? Yeah, CB1 explores supports the exploration of the concept of an East River, a continuous waterfront park along the East River. You originally said development. I'm not sure that's the word. You and you mean to. stretching from? And can we clarify stretching from yes. 14th Street East, 14th Street yeah. down to, to the yeah, battery. Absolutely. To the yes. battery. So well, you should fair. define the the, the, yes. the parameters. Yes. Where the park is right now. Well, you gotta. No, but you have to say where it's going to start and where it's going to end. So where's it ending? That's what I'm asking yeah. for. The yeah, to the battery. To the okay. battery. To the. So northern. would it include the battery or? It excludes the battery. But, I mean, the battery has its own structure. Yes. So I think we can stop. Okay. So okay, two, 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 up two, two the but, battery. Let's you not know, be just with the thickness yet. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, well, pretty sure. Michael, you will help put the language together since you and Tammy came to us with this proposal, and uh, is the committee ready to vote for that? And they should also add uh, all that they should come back and update us on uh, developments, continuing developments as this, uh, this thing proceeds. Yes, this is obviously in, uh, nothing's obvious anymore since I've been on the committee yes. board since 1994. 
Okay. We're adding the language, Paul. Are we also adding the language about the urban fellows? No, I think no, we're that's that out. Right that out. This point. Okay. All right. So we're we're voting on that um, or two lines, it sounds like. Oh, question. Mm -hmm. The question is then called. Okay, so second. Okay, take it away. Uh, all those in favor? Abstaining. Nope. Uh, okay. uh, those online, all those in favor? Yes. Paul. Yes. Francis? Francis? Oh, never mind. Francis, you need okay. to if you want to say it. And, uh, okay, so you're upstanding, you're the only person. Okay. That's it. It passes. Hey, thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you all. All right. Um, why don't we go next to um, we'll do item four and then we'll come back to number three. Item four is from the parks department and it's to reconstruct a park. I know you have a very long slide presentation. Try to move through it as quickly as you can. And one of, and we have Whitney Talcott, uh, parks department landscape architect. Great, thanks. Yes. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Whitney Talkin. I'm a landscape architect with the Parks Department out at Olmsted and the Manhattan team. And I've been working on this Manhattan project for uh, a long time. It's almost 12 years now since uh, Sandy came through. Yeah. I wasn't working again with on it, but um, we've gone through a long and convoluted uh, Process with this, but we uh, we have a lot of money from uh, FEMA that is going uh, to be contributing uh, to the re rehabilitation of this park. Um, and we've also got a hundred thousand dollar contribution from one of our neighbors down there, uh, Silverstein Properties, who would have uh, one one hundred and twenty Wall Street. So the plot for the uh, park is about a half an acre. One. That's better. that's better. Boy, does that help? Um, after talking with a lot of people down there, we came up with these goals, which basically are reconstruct the park from the sandy damage, place easily damaged park elements with sustainable features so that they don't get damaged again. Uh, work within uh, our utilities, which are every kind of utility there is that's down there underground. Uh, create a versatile, people friendly space at the southern end of the park, down there where the fountain is now. Uh, add plants for buffers and to create a more park like feeling in the park. And uh, replace the 9 11 Memorial Fountain with a sustainable alternative. We know where it is down there on Wall Street, where it walks between Water Street, South Street. Um, and we know what happened to it 12 years ago. You can see the, the uh, blue area, the, that is a uh, hundred year flood. We are well within it. Actually, we're eight feet of water over the bottom part of the park uh, when Sandy hit. We also have uh, potential for uh, street flooding uh, under uh, extreme under deer storm events, rainfall. Uh, it's right in there with a, a lot of uh, development. Um, currently, the, the park is really used for you know, people coming in and sitting there at lunchtime or walking through it, going somewhere else. And there are not that many places in the neighborhood 
to do those sort of things. But this, uh, at lunchtime, people get out there and they try to figure out where to have their sandwich in good weather. There's the Esplanade, the Vietnam Vets, there's the area over there by the Imagination Playground, Exlip. But uh, Manhattan is a good place to sit. Existing conditions. Um, really need to tell you about the existing conditions that much because it's a very linear park. It's uh, it's got a line of a marching line of um, lights, light bulbs going down to the fountain. There's this glass fountain which is turned into a planter. A lot of uh, a lot of grant benches that have really drawing the attention to a lot of skateboarders. Um, skateboarders uh, come down there and they, it's all scarred because of the skateboarders. Um, and uh, a lot of broken glass. This is what's underneath. This is really cool. This is uh, all the electrical, the uh, steam, the, uh, water, Mine sewer all through there, a gas also. And uh, the major component here is the four foot diameter um, combined sewer that goes right through the middle of the park. And, and we cannot plant any trees over or make any, um, put any structures on over. They did plant a bunch of trees after Sandy came through. They, they replaced all the trees with cypress, which are eventually will be 60 to 80 feet tall. And uh, they really form a large part of the feeling of the park, I think. And uh, now they're starting to really grow and uh, create some interesting shape. But we can't take them out. They're there and we're trying to work with it. Down around the uh, southern part, um, it's sunny. There's no trees. There aren't, aren't any of those trees down there. And uh, this seems like it uh, gets a, a lot of sun during different parts of the day, um, more than any other part of the park. Um, we, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, broken glass underneath the uh, granite benches and we all left over sandy damage. Uh, mechanical pit down there has is full of water every time we open it up. Uh, the water is almost up to the to the top of it <laughs> because the actual elevation at the very bottom of the park is elevation four. So here's some photos. I saw the area of these these benches. I want to down into it. Can't do much except sit there and look at the person on the other, on the other side of the bench. That's the fountain, which we haven't seen it that way in a long time because it's not doesn't have any shrubbery in it. Um, it is sort of shrubbery. Here's that long linear looking line up the street, and it actually almost touches the Trinity Church if you look at the axis of that steeple. A lot of broken elements, uh, broken uh, sidewalk. Uh, there are pedestrian safety hazards here because there's no sidewalk really in the northern part of the between Front Street and Water Street. Um, can't really imagine sitting there on a bench next to the car. So, um, more damage and uh, the fountain is dedicated to the uh, employees of uh, Deutsche Bank who lost their lives in September 11th. Uh, but this is kind of looking interesting. You know, they have the underneath the uh, underneath the trees, it's a nice shade. Seems feels like you're in a park. People are comfortable sitting here. There's people who come out here and eat their sandwiches on there. Lunch breaks. 
So um, <clears throat> what we're going we're gonna to do is what we'd like to do is take out the take out some of these uh, planter areas at the bottom at the bottom of the park. Take out the fountain. Some of these planters uh, are you can't plant them anyway because there's uh, um, steam lines running under there. Steam lines won't allow you uh, plants to grow. Uh, and we'd like to maintain a five foot sidewalk along the entire uh, sidewalk of the top side with uh, walls. <laughs> This is what we're proposing. We're proposing to make a continuous planter, put the planters together along Wall Street from the lower block. Put a memorial tree here. The, the tree would be a swamp white oak, similar to the uh, swamp white oaks that they have over at the 9 11 memorial. A nice spreading tree. And it, uh, uh, it's a, the longest lived tree. In, on the eastern seaboard, also. They can live to be 400. Um, What's it called again? Swamp White Oak. It's Berkus by color. Um, they're it's on the Connecticut border. It sort of it spreads in an ideal form. It spreads very wide. And it also grows, it grows about 40, 50 feet. And telling what will happen in the urban situation, uh, probably not as nice tall. It's a beautiful, beautiful tree. And I'll show you this from my picture. So when we, we're going to put a winding path through the park instead of this long straight shot, a winding path with uh, benches off this to the side of that path uh, that you can sit and. Uh, Eat your sandwich or have a conversation. The the bottom. Let's go back. Let's go to the top. Come on. Okay. This is the first block from Water Street to Front Street. Winding path goes through here. It's got a little uh, way through from the sidewalk along the uh, the lakes. The, there'll be hex blocks. Ten block concrete pavers, a brick form concrete paver uh, in the small <coughs> path. And there's the existing trees that uh, are going to remain. But in front, uh, along the path, um, I'm proposing tall grass. So you'll be sitting in a uh, kind of like a tall grass meadow um, in, your, uh, in your benches. So it'll be Pretty startling on, on, on the street. It'd be beautiful because this, the tall grass is uh, various colors over the seasons. And this is the continuous sidewalk along Wall Street so that you can get out of your car and you'll have a five foot um, access way so it'll be an accessible way to get around. Also, the uh, DDC is currently working on Front Street and they're putting in new. Um, Curb ramps. This is where they would be. Going down to the bottom one. We have Front Street, South Street, here to go and again. Walk along Wall Street. We use the existing trees and then implant around them. Try to create sort of like a woodland garden as you walk through here. Small. Small trees, things like Amalanche and uh, um, uh, red buds and um, some uh, bush hazel also. Um, so we're putting in water. We water so that they, where we have irrigation, we have um, site lighting, also small little lights that uh, light. The existing trees and the line of existing we want the stall tall straight uh, lights and we're replacing those with what they call the flushing meadow candela 
which is a uh, sort of a little cap. I've got a picture of it. Again, we have uh, hex papers. These papers are going to be uh, varied in color, so you'll have a little pattern. Show you that pattern. And uh, four um, benches, some shade, uh, picnic tables with shade. You can sit around here with in shade, so there's a lot of sun there. We're going to be putting in fences, low, one foot tall fences, so dogs don't just jump over and go into the, you know, to the planters because the planters are, uh, the existing planters are getting a lot of uh, use by the dogs. We're also putting in a, uh, a drinking fountain down at the end here by the, uh, by the tree here. A lot of, uh, a lot of people run by here all, all the time. And uh, we're putting in a uh, drinking fountain with a bottle filling. So here's what the fence looks like. It's a low fence. Curbs are flush curbs. Most of the time, so the water can run right into the planters. Excellent fevers have a pattern. So you are light and dark. And in fact, in the dark, we're going to be putting some uh, glow in the dark uh, papers as well, some solar papers um, to create some more interest in the middle of this uh, of the common space. Drinking fountain with a bottle, bottle filler, uh, and cap accessible. Replacing the existing benches out there with World's Fair 1964 World's Fair benches. We're going to be packing in some of these planters with some boulders. Because um, at the bottom, we're going to be uh, trying to create a little bit of elevation um, to help screen out the uh, South Street and the FDR down there. This is the Plushy Meadow of Candela, um, which is a more modern looking, modern, modern looking uh, light pole, and it also is serviced by the DOT. It's, a, it's one of their common. DOT service elements. The uh, ones that there are down there now are not service. They're downtown Alliance. We're, we're put them in, and uh, they can't get the pieces anymore. So they're they're they, they're not working very well. <clears throat> this is uh, kind of the inspiration of the path that I had when I went up to Boston. <coughs> Path there that uh, Michael Van Valkenburg designed. Um, irrigation system, landscape lighting, picnic table, we're still looking for uh, a uh, shade. Some kind of shade uh, umbrella or shade structure to, to uh, put on top of these, but we'll get one. Crash receptacles. This is the uh, white oak, the swamp white oak. They look like look very nice in the fall, either red or, or yellow color. <clears throat> they spread out a lot. So they're they make an imposing fences. Here are the uh, plants. These are the, the little blue stem and the feathery grass or the tall grasses that uh, we're putting in the plot. Between water front, got some nice small trees, some uh, wildflowers, oh, uh, juniper to go with the field area, a couple of those to make it look kind of like a little area. There we have it. Thomas? Everybody's raising their hand. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a bunch of first of all, thank you very much. What an incredibly fabulous project to be working on, and thanks for all the work you're doing. Um I, I love that park. I know it well. Um 
not that I, I think what you're doing is to like, improve it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just curious though, that one of the most powerful parts of the park you didn't mention, and maybe I've got it wrong, but this is not a half a park. This is the site of the slave market of New York City. And it's not, if that hasn't changed, the fact that you don't mention it, or it's not at all yet as part of the narrative here seems like a missed opportunity to say the very least. Well, you know, we looked at that and I made that remark to several people and I talked to the uh, historic and uh, antiquities people and they said, well, you know what? The, the city council just made a resolution to take that sign, put it actually at Wall Street and Pearl Street where the actual slave market was. So that's we thought it was there too, but it evidently it's it's not. Well, it it says it on the sign that it's where it was, but this was sort of supposed to be the area of the commemorative place. So now you're saying there is nothing but a sign that it's going to be slightly yeah, they, north. They, that they, they, uh, I think that's such an odd move. I mean, my God, if the city needs one thing, it is the commemoration. Um, Slavery, and that was the only evidence of it practically downtown. So I, I have a real problem with that. But I hear you. I, I'm happy to know that that wasn't an oversight. Yeah, they, they <laughs> but, actually made a resolution back in August to that effect. Oh, I guess we'll have to do a little more work on that. But okay, thank you. That's too. yeah, I bet. Okay, wow, that's crazy. Okay, other comments? Yep, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Um, so, number one, I love the drinking fountain. Thank you very much. I think that's great. We just need more of them. Another thing I would like to request more of, if it's possible, would be tables. Um, because, I, I mean, I've noticed just in our space that we have, like, you know, some areas with tables and, and seating, and then we have just bench seating. And the tables always get taken first. Um, and then overflow is on the benches. I think it's because... You know, we have lots of students that come by, and so they might do homework and conversation. It's a place to put your bottle. It's a place to, like, put your bag. Uh, and it's more sort of friendly and conversational mm -hmm. and community building. So if there is an opportunity to replace some of the benches with benches and tables or chairs and tables or, or whatever, rather than just the force that you see at the very um, closest to South Street, I think that would be a great opportunity. Uh, I, uh, we've, I mean, we've been discussing that and trying to figure out what the right ratio is and uh, what the um, what actual uh, what what type of uh, benches and, uh, and and tables are uh, and whether they should be put into the you know, migrate out here a little bit. But, you know, I think one of the nicest parts of the space is that it can be used for some, you know, it's a adaptable space. You have an art show. You can have somebody could be playing the trombone out here. Um, you have a yoga class. You know, yeah. uh, all sorts of things. Um, or you can have a community event. So uh, that's great. I I mean I actually do think we should keep that place open and flexible. But maybe where you have some of the other benches and where it's more shaded as well, because I mean, so far we've also found that people tend to veer to the shade and rather than full on sun. Um, yeah, I mean, we could we can put a few more benches in there and and maybe some table more tables in there. But we do need some sitting space around the uh, outside of that. Um, the other thing is it looked like your fencing was extremely minimal and porous. And, and so I wasn't sure if that was going to just, my, I guess my question is, does that actually deter dogs from jumping in or just walking in if they're short or? Um, I'm hopeful. And, yeah. but it does, um, it, it does keep people from walking through there because right. several of uh, the current planters yeah, people trampling down through there. Oh, the people were. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, I didn't realize it's the people that was oh my gosh, it's the dogs. Okay. And we're also researching being putting in some uh, netting uh, on those fences so that uh, you, the dogs can't get under. Okay. Well, there are a lot of small dogs around. There are. That's what I noticed. They're just literally walking right in. They're not even jumping. Uh, my 
sorry, last question. Um, are the plants flood resilient since no. this is the area that's not going to have the flood protection for a very, very long time? Mm -hmm. Well, certainly the vault suckers there are flood resilient. Okay. Um, I mean, a lot of the other ones are, are not going to. They're not going to survive. I mean, yeah, the, we had the river, there were river birch here before. And when the it was flooded, those all went. And if there was any kind of uh, any kind of a movement of the water, it just rips things right out of the ground. So it's, it's a whole thing. You can't do a lot with the shrubbery, I don't think. Oh, I'm sorry, I did word list. I have one more question, which is is any of this considered to be um like maybe like a bioswale or like a like some sort of more permeable pavers or like any well that's the, the thought of having a flush curve on um, yeah. these um, especially down in here. Yeah. Because uh that like it have some uh, and there are some st structures uh, that we're gonna capture. Um, by putting in these planting areas, you know, some actual drainage structures there, and then we can capture those and we can put little beehives on them, and yeah. we can um, make them this, you know, little quasi uh, rain gardens here. Oh, great. So that's, you know, we're going to be looking at that too. It's as much as possible. Okay. Um, Alice, before you go, let me just see if there's yeah. anyone else who hasn't spoken who wants yes. to say anything. Yes, we have three. We have three in the room. Okay. Why don't you, why don't they go? Who is it? Eric, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I'm concerned about security. Um, I noticed that you want to, the design is to keep it so that you think that you're in a nature preserve, which is fine. I appreciate it. But in this environment, I, I don't want people to hide. Now, if something happens to somebody, I want other people who are not in the park or maybe in the park, but a different area to be able to see what's happening. I'm concerned if it's too packed with greenery, especially with the tall grasses, and it's not this great line anymore, which I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you added you know, some herbs in there, but it needs to be, people need to be seen there. And I, I would prefer that over the isolation of, of being in a nature, you know, in a, in a nature preserve. Um, and then also, instead of having irrigation, would you plant, have plants that can tolerate, you know, that, that are native to New York so that we don't have to have an irrigation system that will eventually fail? And then also, please consider adding in some elevation. Um, I think it'll, it'll change, you know, instead of everything being one level, I'm not on the right, but instead of one level, it adds some. Some elevation, it'll change the character of it, and then also during during heavy rains, that would even make it more resilient to flooding. I mean, I, I know you, if, if we're having a big flood, it's never going to stop it, but just having even a few inches or a foot higher, and if the street floods, that will be the last place to flood. Mm -hmm. um, and then also with the tables, maybe. A combination table and chess table, then people could do other things there. Also, be there or even play chess. Yeah, we have some uh, chess table standard items in our um, contracting. We could put a chess table down. The uh, you, made, you asked many questions. I didn't, uh, sorry, I didn't stop. I just keep going. Okay. The uh, first of all, we're actually being paid uh, by FEMA, but FEMA does not usually do plants. So we're really thankful that uh, Silverstein gave us the money to put plants in here. Um, so that was very helpful to them. Um, Downtown Alliance basically maintains the park and they put in uh, an irrigation system that is currently working and has been working for some time. So they, they're pretty hands on with this. Uh, um, and uh, also, FEMA will give us a lighting system, a site lighting system. And with the uh, lighting, we, we tend to believe that you're not going to have people hiding uh, when you have it lit well. 
and let's see, we have both the candela lights and the uh, and little uh, landscape lighting for the rows. And the uh, the path is actually wider than I would have liked it but in New York. You need to have at least eight feet wide. So we're this this path that goes through here is uniformly eight feet wide. So um, that's a pretty uh, decent width for people walking in both directions, whatever else of the transport you might have. That was my question. What are the modes of transport that are allowed? Are bicycles allowed in there? I would say no. So that means no bicycles, no scooters with motors, or bicycles with motors. This is a one way Wall Street here. It was out. It's a uh, well, bicycles are notorious for not following the rules. That is true. Uh, and they're oh, and they're usually pretty arrogant jerks about it. Mm -hmm. um, so then my question is, will there be signage about that? Yes. And who will be enforcing that? Yeah, you know, there isn't forces at any not a, there, there are uh, employees like in other parks that have a uh, public restroom and a uh, maintenance facility. This doesn't have doesn't have that. This is a primarily primarily a, a park where people sit, people walk through. So the uh, parks enforcement will not be involved. Uh, you know, I I can't really give you an answer on that, but. Um, I'm sure that people come through here. Um, I'm not sure what the schedule is. I mean, it's similar to Vietnam yeah, no, vets down the street a little bit, which I was involved with in the restoration of that. It's not as elaborate. No. Well, I mean, a lot of the policing is the people, civic people. That's that's uh, that's policing by by the population. It's not working, Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, did, did the other person go. Okay, uh, yeah, I had a couple of other questions and points. So having lost the slave market aspect, I'm just recovering from that. Okay, so the other thing that again that I'm uh, all very wonderful in many ways, but I'm curious the decision really to, to not really capitalize on the view. Um, all your seating is not really facing the great view, which is the open sky and water mm. of, you know, the beast. And it, it particularly the, the deed reform, which I understand, I just I love the idea of this plaza, but you're capturing 120, or what is it, wall versus, you know, at all having a place or kind of centering of that view out to the water. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, that seems like an interesting decision not to do that. And you have one tree, which could be really beautiful, but is that, is the, is that water fountain at that tree? It's, it's near it. Yeah, I would say that struck me. Is that your crescendo? The last thing you want to see is yeah. the water fountain, anything think, like that. I don't think you'll see too much of that water fountain. Well, okay, I just, I but, thought that um, was a... The major issue, I mean, yeah, looking out at the East River is, is wonderful. And it's a lot of things yeah. going on. There. But you're also looking at the FDR. Well, and, uh, you're really a big through it. You're really looking under it. I mean, I've sat on these benches and I'm always there's very few to one that go that look right out to the water and always competing for one. But anyway, okay, so I hear you. You're, you're, it's just the way the layout is, or mm -hmm. no, it's, it is a tough layout. Yeah, very, very right. Okay, well, that was just one. Thought, I guess, as we've done. But also, the benching. You know, I always, this world's, this love affair with the 1964 World's Fair benches. Does the Parks Department have any other bench that is at its discretion to use? Or is that, so, love the, the idea of benches with backs, of course, but is there any other bench? I'm just curious. Well, I mean, you got the 1939, or 30, yeah, the 39. <laughs> I know that I had another one. We do have lots of, uh, we're a little fair with the bear benches, yes. But, um, because our park standard bench is really the the old bench, yeah. But um, 
but like things that we see, for example, in the bat in Battery Port City, well, not Battery Port City, no, um, uh, uh, the High Line, you know, for example. Well, in a more contemporary, more contemporary, well, yeah, are there more contemporary benches? I just, just a question, it's not necessarily a percentage, just so there are, but this is a favorite. It is, but we have actually, there are less of these than the, the old ones. And uh, it could be beautiful. It yeah. just was really like, what, what is your palette? Can, How many things to choose and, from? We can also color them in a different way now. And, uh, but we'll look and see if there's any other pictures. Well, I'm not advocating for necessarily just, it was out of curiosity. If it's not, this is a beautiful bench. It just, it's always coming up. And I thought there's so many contemporary designers making benches throughout the world. I just thought, okay, because the parts form and have any of them. Um, I love the idea of the rain gardens that brought me to mind. The CEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, gives money to providing rain gardens in yeah. parks, right? So do, are you getting any money from GEP for this? No. It seems like. Really them, but we, we actually have to talk to them on the, in the process of doing this. Um, the, the, Construction documents. We will talk to them, and and we will talk to them about the potential of, of, of the range arts here. Yeah, yeah. Like, it'd be, yeah, they. You know, this used to be to a. Used to, this was Wall Street, right? The uh, and it's all paved, and it's, um, we're going to have to do some heavy uh, um, cutting to get down to actual. Um, it's all compacted. Earth. Almost like concrete. Uh, so to get down there and to, to, to where the water would actually percolate into the ground is, uh, and we're, we're going to do some research on that. And we just have one other question was this accept accessibility path of is it this gray line that going around the, the, the. Yes, that's. What is that made out of? What is that? Is that the hexagonal paper? No, well, no, it's concrete. This is concrete. It's, well, I guess that. It looks like a sidewalk. Is there any option to make that more resilient and maybe a little more um, integrated with the park itself, or that's just a decision made? This is the most accessible um, paving, and we're putting it in the most um, traveled spot, I guess, for some of it. Um, the actual the uh, CDC is actually installing some of it and will be in the next couple of weeks because they're they're getting to the point where they're rebuilding Pump Street right now. Well, anyway, it's a wish, it's a wish, a personal wish of mine. I'm sure I'm not alone that sometimes these parts of your furnishings in park furnishings in parks mm -hmm. becomes even a competition among designers. So then you can really start to change the palette. You look at those tables. And you think we could do better. You sometimes you look at benches, you look at that water fat, and there's so many other well, we see them all over the world, you know, and at some point it would be nice if parks has a bigger palette from which to choose. Well, anyway. A lot of it has to do with budget. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, it's, it always is nice to have some variety. Um, they, you know, they these benches fit into our specs very nicely. Um, yeah, no, they're beautiful. The tables on those. Going issues. down to the uh, SLA uh, annual meeting in Washington, D.C. in about two and a half weeks. Oh. And uh, there are a lot of people with benches there. <laughs> and, and the tables. And tables. The look, tables are. Look the at the tables. Tables are like really, really mean there. Yeah. Thank That's you. Really Thank you, Whitney. You shared a lot of very useful information. Are you planning to uh, present to the full board? Or should I just summarize this? Um, I mean, we could, if you'd like, talk to the full board. Um, but what we would like actually is your endorsement. And, uh, and next week, the, the full board is going to. Right. Me. So you are seeking a resolution support. Okay. So we'll discuss that now. And Certainly, if we're going to consider that, I guess we would like you to be at that board meeting next Tuesday. Okay, committee members, anyone want to propose a resolution of 
First, Eric has a question. Who's that? Uh, Eric. Eric has. I have a question. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so this park, as it currently stands and will be, it's open 24 hours. Yes. So I, I know you said before that illumination will deter crime. I'm, I'm concerned it won't enough. They won't do that enough. So if, if you would consider modifying it so that, especially in the northern part, that, you know, the one between uh, fronts and, and and I don't know what's that water, water. 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 If, if make sure that there's always a clear line of sight. Because I from the from the red rings I saw tall grasses and a lot of trees. Well, the tall grasses are not going to be taller than. I mean, I think. Something like that. I, mean, I, I don't think they're going to grow that much higher than that. And, and as long as the trees aren't too dense, you know, as they grow, as they grow. Well, that's going to take some um, thinning uh, from the our forestry department to keep them. Growing. And yes, the uh, but the way that it's going now, you. Um, the branches are, you know, at, at like this level, and the branches are going to keep on. The lower branches are going to be, you know, die, and the branches they're going to everything's reaching for the light, and the, the when they get, I fully think that some of those those plants are are too tight right now. The ones that are planted there now, those those trees, um, you're probably going to lose maybe twenty percent of them. Okay, thank you. If you pick an, uh, another bench, just make sure you know it's one that skateboarders won't like. <laughs> and um, and uh, you know it's not conducive to people just sleeping on there as well. No, that's another thing. I mean, yeah. you see the dividers on all those benches. Yeah, that's so good about those. Plus, they're I, I like those benches. And they have to be comfortable to sit on. Mm -hmm. Are there other tables that you can provide? Are there other tables that we could? Yeah, there are a bunch of tables. That we can can the community them. look at other ones, maybe? Because those really seem. This is the one you showed us. Mm -hmm. This one. I don't know. Maybe I, it's like a metal looking. Seat. Yeah. There's no wood in yeah, it. Yeah. it just be, look like it would be very very hard to sit up. Also, if. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, you, you know, that's the picture table. Actually, we kind of like that. This is a non standard picture table. Mm -hmm. This is something we just picked out. Okay. And it has certain lightness. It's good. Oh, it has, uh, it's accessible because you can bring up a wheelchair to it. Uh, and it'll have an umbrella in it. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. This is landscape, landscape structure, which is a major. Um, a supplier of furnishings. Do you have a view of what it looks like when you're sitting there looking at the waterfront? Does that tree block the waterfront at this point, or do you, you can still see the water? Whenever you say the FDR, but the FDR and the water behind it. Is there? A, can you still see it from sitting walking down that path in, in the in the garden? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, I guess we so, you don't have the risk perspective. Of the FDR is right there. Mm -hmm. See underneath the FDR. Walking right. Okay. Um, yeah, we got a couple of competing uh, issues there. Mm -hmm. This is the sound and the and the well, sight of the FDR, and uh, looking at the. Well, I mean, you can. This will be pretty. Yeah. Uh, and Okay, so uh, committee, do you want to do any sort of resolution or do you need more time? Or... Uh, I think as no, long as not. everything we talked about is included in the whereas of some of the things we've just reviewed for the last half hour. And, and I really want clarity on the, if you can give it on the slave market aspect. So this, has been removed by council from this park, mm -hmm. the designation, the sign yep. to go where it's going to be put somewhere else. Wall Street and Pearl Street. 
So it's just going to be a sign on the street with no commemorative space to go with it. I, I don't know. Um, that's not that's not our department. No. Well, they figure out. Well, I mean, at this point, we'll look at the benches, and we'll look in, including some more picnic tables, and uh, maybe a chess table. David. Yeah, I'm not absolutely sure, but it seems to me at the time of the slave market. That park would have been underwater. I'm not sure that land would have been there. Right, because so Water Street, well, Water Street was where the water was, right? Right. And the, and the, uh, well, that's what they're claiming. I mean, they're saying that it has nothing to do with so they've taken away the sign. But my point is that that was for many years the commemorative place where people right. thought about New York's history of slavery. The year was 1711, I think. But it's not the actual. It's yeah. just not specific. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of. What are you showing me? Sorry. You. The water, yeah, so exactly. The drive. Yeah, there are more than that one open like sky. No, it's the open sky. I think there's more than one location for the state market as well. Well, I, I would bid in support um, with the addition of more chairs. If we're doing, are we doing a resolution support? I get, well, that's what's being requested of us. It's up to the committee. We could include a few of these elements, more mm -hmm. and better benches and tables, and uh, we could ask them to take another look at the slave market recognition. Um, you could add to my comment about the bi bi bicycles or motor vehicles and the signage and enforcement of question. I was, wasn't, wasn't really 100% sure on that. Yeah, we could put, I mean, we could put signage. Or we could just add that and. Who's going to enforce it? We'll, we will, we uh, will be here. We can have signage. Uh, yeah, we're, we're putting signage in to, for the docks not to uh, go into the into the planted areas. Sure. And uh, we can put a, you know, scooters and bicycles not allowed. You know, not, not, not uh, dismount when you're entering, not allowed. Oh. Uh, Instead of putting something about security, Make sure that that it's safe at, at night. That people can be seen. Properly secure. Okay. Okay, a resolution that would uh, include those elements. Is there uh, somebody who wants to make that questions. resolution? Hold the question. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? And in, in opposed? In favor. favor with all the things we said, including, for example, that the waterfront fountain should be hidden. It shouldn't be something you see from the top of the park to the bottom. That was another point I know I raised. Um, Wendy and Paul? Yes, in favor. Alice, make sure you give your a specifics to. Um, Donesh. To you, right? Okay. I'm sorry. What is the language? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. you Did everybody vote? Mm -hmm. Oneg, did you get the vote? Yes, I did. Nobody okay. saying. Well, no. Are there any Thank other you very questions? much. Thank vote? you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's finish up. I think there's, um, we just want to tell you about a temporary artwork that's going into Capsudo Park on Canal Street. So why don't we just show a slide or two of, of that? I think it's already been put up. It's been there since August and it's supposed to be there until March. Is there paper? Is there a picture of it? Yes. So, as you know, um, you know, public art is not, we cannot just veto it. We can raise issues or ask questions. So, if anyone has something along those lines, 
pass it on to me or to Onage. I guess that's about it. That thing hollow? Is that hollow? The tube? We could, why don't you ask that? Onage, please yeah. make a note of that and find out. I was wondering if rainwater would collect in there. Mm. So it looks like the rain out the bottom. Drains out the bottom. Yeah, that's all. Hopefully. Yeah, when it's at that one point, yeah. I'm sure they figured it out. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, we'll just for the bees. Mm -hmm. All right, I think. Okay, we otherwise, uh, we're going to really discuss uh, the budget in more detail next month. Thank you. So uh, I want to thank you for coming, and unless there's anything else, I'll bid you a good night. Okay. Thanks good. a lot for watching. I miss you. Good to see you. Thank Earth you. Water. Okay. Take care. Good night. That was an interesting one. I haven't seen a landscape in a while. That was fun.